beautiful Sunday morning. It is a beautiful day, man. We just excited to be in the house of the Lord today. Tom's excited to be in the house of the Lord today. Who out here is excited to be in the house of the Lord today? There we go. So this must be the, uh, the side that took their weekend shower bath over here because this side here is kind of like, yeah. So, all right, we're going to try something new and different today. How do you, you guys know that something new and different is okay? All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring up one of our youth on Sunday mornings, and they are going to read a devotion or the morning scripture. Amen. You know, it's important that our youth are involved in the church. Amen. So we're going to have Miss Lily, if you want to come on up here and uh, go ahead and start us off. Let's give Lily a round of applause. Okay, so we'll be in the book of Proverbs, if you want to get there. Um, I'll be reading the verse... Proverbs 3, 5 through 6, and the word of God reads, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him, and he will make your path straight. And basically, this verse is just saying, you're going to think you know it all. I do when driving. I, I'm guilty of it. And you're going to go through trials in your life, and God will always put you on the right paths. And he'll put, you, he'll, he'll put you on the right paths out of your situations. In the right timing, God will make it happen. Isaiah 60, 22 reads, When the time is right, I, the Lord, will make it happen. For instance, when going up to the altar and you're going to give your life to Christ, the pastor allows you to repeat the sinner's prayer. And he states before this prayer, This prayer will not save you. Your actions after is what matters. God will put opportunities in your life, and we have the choice to take it. That's the beauty in it, and I think too many times we get so we just get so wrapped up in the media and forget what matters over anything. But again, if you put your faith in Jesus and do not rely on your own understanding, our understanding is finite, and God's understanding is infinite. To conclude, I would like to go back to the book of Isaiah. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. Isaiah 55:8. Amen. Let's give our Lord God a shout of praise, church. Yeah, You're able to, let's go ahead and stand to our feet today. It is the first Sunday of the month, which means it's our build the house Sunday. We're going to sing our song, The Lord Build the House. Trusted my home straight, but it was sinking sin. So I put all my ruins into your hands, and I watch you restore them. Nobody can tear it down if the Lord builds a 
start to this. Um, I can't even tell you what our total was last month because I have it just by month and not by a grand total. But however, the month of May was very, 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 very good. Woo! <laughs> we had an anonymous donation to our Build the House Fund of, drum roll, <laughs> Christmas vacation. Thirteen thousand dollars. I hear the clippers. So for the month of May, we received thirteen thousand five forty-one thirty-five. So we have a total all together so far this year of $16,381. God's good. Now, I shared with you a month or so ago that I had a dream that I won, played the slots. I won $130,000. Do you remember that, any of you? Well, 13000 is 10% of that 130000 <laughs> me that donated it and it's not lottery money. <laughs> All right, that's my laugh of the day. <laughs> that's my laugh of the day. <laughs> she doesn't want you to come ask her for money. She probably won. <laughs> I'm not afraid to come ask her for money. That's it's right, all right. That's right. <laughs> no, Pastor Rob, you definitely <laughs> That's because Beth he gets sends me. Paul. <laughs> All right, beautiful people. Good morning. Man, it's been yeah. um, today, announcement. How many people are members in this church? Okay, I'm taking a visual. I should be able to see you all after church for the membership meeting. Yay. So everybody has a say, and that's what's so beautiful about that. you got to come. Everybody has their own experiences and their own expertise, um, your own ideas. And honestly, like, I get tired. I'm going to get on a soapbox briefly. Some of you come up to me and say, I'm not good at this. I can't do this. I'm not strong enough in this. I'm not talented enough in this. I'm not creative. All of that is just negative self-talk, and it's not, it's not for here. It's not for this place. It's not for us. All of us have that, but it's not for us. And that's not what God wants for us. And in order for him to work in you, this is about him and not about you and your abilities or lack thereof. And if he wants you to do it, he will put you through it. Do you know what I mean? Like, he will equip you for everything that he needs to do. Right. So, we will be coming together for membership after this after this uh, service. So, Give the Water is, is for today, for Ecuador this morning. So, you can write that. Um, 
missions number on your envelope, if you're putting in an offering. Um, I gave it through Tithely. I put it in the women's group just because I wanted them to see like it's still an option for that. Um, so that's a possibility as well. So um, there's that. Uh, Ohio Church of God camp meeting starts tonight at 630. Has anybody ever attended that? Yep. Not you, Pastor. One person, wow, okay. So yeah, so church, oh, two, two. Okay, we're rising up. So uh, 6.30 at the Potter's House in Columbus. So it is a bit of a haul. Monday and Tuesday services are 7 p.m. Obviously build the house offering. Um, tomorrow evening, 5 p.m. drive through prayer. Yeah, it's good, it's good. Our, our neighbors see what we're doing. People that live in this area, people that drive through this area, people that are lost. There are lost people every day. There are good people that are going to go to hell. They're going to go to hell because they do not know and they do not understand that this is not an option. Right. And one day, everybody's knees will bow. Everybody. Yeah, and we either do it and fall in love while we're here or we spend an eternity wishing that we would, made a dip, we would have made a different decision. And there are times where it is too late. So I just want to say, we get an opportunity to share this love every Monday. And if you feel like, e, I don't like to be in the limelight, this is great for you. Stand on the sidelines and still be a contender in the fight. It's amazing. It's a good thing to do. Um, let's see here. Where am I? I often lose track. Okay, so uh, midweek service. You guys know we have those. It's so good. It's like Bible study. It's good to get into the word. How are you supposed to hide it in your heart so that we don't sin against God if we don't if we don't come and study? That's the way that it happens. So um, anyway, the roots, and we get to fellowship with each other. That's important. It's important to build relationships in the church. He said don't forsake the church for a reason because we need people. We need people. So we need each other, build each other up. June 10th is Roger's Auction Barn. Um, there is sign-ups in the back. I think that there's still a couple things that maybe that we're missing. But if you would like to bring something, if you would like to go help, because we need workers as well. The parade, June 17th. I feel like we've done some really cool things. So does anybody want to hear real briefly, briefly about the float? Okay, I'm going to tell you anyway. So anyway, so Sean uh, Manier, my husband, he's going to be driving the, his semi. And then we've got the, like a Landall trailer. So, and we're hillbilly, so we're going to put hay bales on there. I know Shannon and Blair is like, why? What is going on with the hay bales? <laughs> so I'm all, we're all about hay bales at my house. So, but hay bales, and then Shannon actually got some purple cloth because for Sarah, that's why. So we're going to put purple cloth over the hay bales um, that are on the, the trailer. And purple's a royal color, right? Like it's just, it's a beautiful thing. And we want to be able to represent her in some way, and we thought that that was a great way to do it, so awesome job. But there's so many of you that are helping. Hannah and Jacob are doing amazing things. Um, Shirley is doing it. There's so many people that have come together just to make this work. We've got signs made. Um, Shirley planted sunflowers. We're going to hand out to the community and just tell them we're here and to come get rooted and to, to come hang out and be a part of something special. So that's that. Um, the father-son dinner. So that is on the 17th, which is the exact same day as the commemoration parade. I'm sorry, we don't have a separate day. It's going to be what it is. We are also doing a cornhole tournament. So get your arm ready. Just calm down. I don't want you to hurt yourself before you. He's back there stretching. So listen, find your bracket. And there's no hitting, biting, pulling hair. Yeah, no. <laughs> No, minimal violence. Pull my hair, I dare you. <laughs> minimal violence. So, but yes, yeah, see Carolyn, because Carolyn is going to um, set up the bracket so that she can make sure that you're not taking nice. advantage of people. We'll put you in an elderly bracket. Um, and then if we have enough, yeah, yeah, we don't want you to get hurt. Um, but if we have enough kids to be able to do that, then we can kind of set up like something tiny for them. We also have some activities for them as well. Um, also, anybody here have cornhole boards that they can help with so that we can have, okay, back there, anybody else? I do. Perfect. Of course you do. Of course you do. Right. He's like, I've just got eight sets. It's fine. Yeah. Anybody? Yeah. So we have three. There's four. There's five. There's six. So yeah, that'll be great. Bring it. Do it. Don't forget it. You have one job. Don't forget it. You don't have one job. You have 18. 
today. Uh, July 2nd, service at the lake. Man, it was an awesome experience last year. Amen. Anybody attend? Yeah. What a beautiful thing. And not only that, but everybody, we're witnesses to our faith in the community. People were there last year watching this. It is important. It is important that people visualize us working out our faith. That is a declaration of a decision that you've made internally. And you're doing out in the open and out in public. And it was just a beautiful thing. So please come. I will do a barbecue. We'll all get fat and happy and then we'll praise Jesus. Um, let's see. So sign up sheets for food. If you want baptized as well, please, the sign up is on the board. VBS is coming. Please, we need workers. July 10th through the 14th, we need helpers. So there's still plenty of time to get your tree gear. It is new. It helps get, um, obviously, our church name out into the community. And it's a way for people to be able to ask you, hey, where do you go to church? So make it happen. Um, two seconds, one more thing. I want to thank the people in this church. And I know that you don't like to be called out by name. The Winkers specifically don't like that. So I won't mention them. But there are so many in this church. Um, I, I saw, and I, forgive me because I can't remember your name. I think it's Mike, Matt, whatever it is. Blue shirt, back row. Jeremy. Jeremy. I was so close. It's Barry. Very so like close cousins, but um, but like I watch him come out and he mows and he takes care of stuff and and the guys, Sean, Shane, um, you know all of these people that they, they put in Tom, you know Lynn put in so much work into this church and I just want you to know I see it and I know everybody else sees it and I know you're not doing it so that you can get a thank you but I think it's important to acknowledge you. And, and building the ark, you guys have put in such beautiful work, and it's because it comes from your heart. But I know it's important to me to say that, that I am, I, he didn't call us, you know, to, to just sit there and be idle. He called us to serve and not to be served. And that is what you're doing, and I recognize that. So that's all I want to say. Um, stand together with me. I'm sorry I'm long-winded. Your, my family will let you know that that's definitely normal. Sermon one day. Hey, just calm down. You cannot complain about anybody being long-winded. <laughs> all right, all right. Thank you, Jesus, for this morning. Thank you that you allowed us to open our eyes. Every breath that we take is because you've ordained that breath, Jesus. You have ordered our steps today, and it has led us to your house. And we are here to praise you and to worship you, not for what you do for us, but just because you're holy, just because you're God, just because we were so blessed to be able to hear your name and make a decision that would lead us here. If there's anybody in this place that has not made that decision, just start to work on them. Let Allow your spirit start to soften hearts this morning that you would give us a heart of worship, Jesus. Thank you so much for this morning. Thank you for these people. Thank you for being in this place. I'm trading my sorrow. I'm trading my shame. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord.
some of the time, right? He's not just good when we want him to be good. Hmm. 
He's even good when we're struggling. Yes, and a fan hand will be really nice right now. Well, we have an awesome God. And I just can't get over the things that uh, he shows us in life. Um, I know I've talked to some about just asking God to show you. Show you ministering opportunities or opportunities to be ministered to. And if you have that, if you ask that from your heart, all right, God, show me. Show me your love. Show me, show me something. I mean, come on. That's all you have. Just show me something. He will blow your mind away. And he will show you more than what you ask for. So he's an awesome God. He's an amazing God. And I just want to encourage you, if you don't have that relationship with Christ today and you want that relationship, I ask you, today is the day. Today is the day that the Lord has made. So let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Great are you, Lord. Mighty in strength, because you are faithful and you will never be.
uh, the, the first verse there, it says, uh, strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. Sometimes waiting is not fun. Yeah. It is not fun. Right. You know me, I'm a very impatient person. <laughs> do you, do you really know? Yeah. And, and I, I really don't like waiting. seasons of life, and uh, you know, th- this season that uh, our family is going through is a lot of waiting, and the one thing we've learned is, is while we wait, we've got nothing else to do, we'll just go ahead and wait, you know, I mean, if you're waiting on something, you just want to sit there and just kind of mope around all day, nobody likes a moper. <laughs> That strength that comes in, in, in that, that waiting, when, when you're waiting for God. You know, God tells us three things. Pastor Rob has told us this. He would tell you yes, he'll tell you no, or he'll tell you to wait. We can handle yes. I mean, we love when God says yes to us. When God says no to us, we get over it. But when God says wait, come on. God has a sense of humor. But there's a reason why God is make, is having you in this waiting moment. It's because he has something for you. And it's just like a garden. You, you till the ground. I'm not a, listen, I'm not a farmer. I'm not a gardener. So, Windrush, please, please don't judge me on this. All I know is stuff comes out of the ground and we eat it. Right? How it gets there, I know there's probably fertilizer, but we're not going to, that stuff stinks. But when you put all this in there, you have to wait before you can actually enjoy what there is. But the benefits of it are amazing. And that's what's awesome about God, is during this time, this season, if you're waiting for God to open that door for you, praise Him. Because the things that He's about ready to show you, He opens that door for you. The things that's about ready to be seen and shown to you are going to blow your mind.
believe that in the house, that he is bigger. He is bigger and he is stronger than any mountain that we face. is the creator of everything. So why would we not trust that he would move that mountain that's in front of us? But that mountain's just way too high, Chester. Listen, I've hiked a lot of mountains. All right? And it's easy to get the mountains when you have a bear chasing you. I just, I just want to say that, all right? But you know that mountain's still there. It's not being moved. God, you, you said, by, by, by your son's stripes, we are healed. But yet that mountain is still right there in front of me, God. And your promise is that you will move that mountain, but that mountain is still right there. What is going on, God? How many of you have asked that question to God before? Why? I'm going to be honest with you and real right now, okay? I asked God multiple times, why did my wife get cancer? You know how many people prayed over my wife that she be healed in Jesus' name? You know how many people came and said she's going to be healed and she'll have you cancer free? Guess what she is? But that mountain is still there. You can move mountains, God. You created that mountain. But what's awesome about our God, and the world will do this to you, okay? The world will be like, yep, you're going to face that mountain. Tough luck. And then the world will turn its back on you and walk away and say, good luck while that bear chases you. I'm out. Mountain's still there. So God says, Paul, come with me. We'll tackle this mountain together. That's what's awesome about our God. He may not move that thing in your life, that thorn in your side. I mean, how many times did Paul ask for that thorn to be taken out of his side? God will not let you be by yourself during this moment. If you are suffering, if you are struggling, if you are having difficulties in life, God is with you. He has not gone away. So many will turn their backs on you. God never will. When you finally realize that and you believe in that and you have faith in an awesome, everlasting God, He is so awesome. And you will live every day of your life with that, that feeling of love and that feeling of happiness 
No, it's okay to be mad. It's okay to get angry. It's okay to cry. David is okay to cry. Because you know who's right there with you? Jesus. He has his arms wrapped around you right now. Amen? So church, when I, when I, on Sunday mornings, I said, let's get excited for God. That's why I'm excited about God, because he is such an awesome, amazing God that he will never, ever, ever leave you alone. Kind of like your kids. <laughs> Don't leave you alone. I just want to share that with you. I don't know who's got a mountain in their life right now, but God's hiking it up with you. Okay? Let's go ahead and sing that chorus again. Let's just, I won't be shaken, okay?
look at them through humanistic eyes. Instead of looking at them through God's eyes. Because what might be a mountain to you, if you look at it through God's eyes, is not even the size of an anthill. Whoa. Sometimes we have to climb up those mountains because God wants us to experience the climb, which is hard, but to experience the awesomeness of what it feels like to be on the top of the mountain in his presence. But it's what you get at the mountain. I knew they're playing this song and I'd be worried about that. What you get at the mountaintop you have to take because once you get to the top guess what you still gotta go down but what he gives you up here you need to take down to the valley with you to get you through your valley times because we all have valley times amen but like this song you can worship him in the valley just as loud as you can worship matter of fact you should worship him louder in the valley yeah. than what you should on the mountaintops amen We're gonna, come on come on yeah. come on yeah there's many of us, including your pastoral family, that's in valley moments right now. But can I tell you that no matter what, God's still there, and we're still going to worship him, and we're going to kick the devil in the teeth. We're going to raise our hands. We're going to shout on the name yeah. of Jesus. And when we get to the mountain, we're going we're gonna to tell that mountain to get out of the way until God tells us, no, I want you to climb it. Yeah. And then I look for a taxi service. No, then we just start climb on our way. Man, we're getting ready to take our morning tithes and offering if the ushers start coming forward. My question to you today is this, as we get ready to take up our morning tithes and offering, what does the word offer mean to you? What does, what does the word offer mean to you? Because our God, our Heavenly Father, offered everything to each and every one of us. So what are you getting ready to offer? What are you willing to offer Him? Are you willing to offer to him? Are you willing to offer whatever he tells you to offer? Are you willing to bless him this morning? Do not give your do not give your water offering. We're going to take that up here in a minute. This is just our regular tithes and offering. Uh, what are you willing? What are you willing to do? What are you willing to offer him this morning? Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you. We praise you and we bless you. Lord, thank you for this family. Lord, and we're not we're not just a church, but we are truly family. This family is growing each and every day. Lord, growing spiritually, but also growing physically, Lord. Now I just ask that you do what only you can do. Reach down and multiply these offerings, Lord, not to where there's just enough, but where there's an abundance and overflow to help birth the ministries that you've called this church to do. Lord, we love you. We praise you and we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody says, amen and amen. valley oh when things go wrong you know that he'll make them right and the God of the good times he's still God in the bad times he's the God of the day he's still God in the night for the God on the mountain He's still God in the valley. Oh, when things go wrong, yes, He'll make them right. And the God of the good times, He's still God in the bad times. Oh, the God of the day, He's still God in the night. Yes, the God of the day. needs to come up from what I was just told. So Dave, get on up here. Hey, if you have guess. a birthday, you get up here. God's watching. Uh, Jessica, uh, we'll take care of that in a, a week or two. So I think Dave needs your retirement home family. Say it again. Eight. Say it again. Eight. Say it again. Oh, oh, oh. How old's your daddy? Not eight. Okay, hey, hey, Pastor Rob. <laughs> Pastor yes. Rob. 
We had a brother throw a sister under the bus. Next weekend, Miss Carolyn Wingard. Oh, come on up, Carolyn, come on. Well, this next weekend, we still two, two weekends in a row, right? Man, look at all these June birthdays. Yeah. yeah. You know what that means. There was a lot of cold winters during this time. Come on. <laughs> all right, church, here's our note. give water offering and, and for so those of you that haven't been here for this what we are doing is we are joining um, with Church of God uh, Church of God World Missions to give clean drinking water to people in Ecuador how many people know it's important to have clean water amen yeah. how many people know that we uh, here in the United States take water for granted right let's just think about things that that we use water for we use water to drink we use water to make coffee. Yeah. All 50 cups that I've had, I'm going to be like either crashing in a minute or going to the moon, one of the two. We wash dishes in water. We bathe ourselves. Most of us bathe ourselves in, <laughs> in water. We swim recreationally in water. But there are people that are so desperate for water that they literally scoop things out of mud puddles. Yeah. And they scoop things out of contaminated creeks just so they have something to be able to just to wash dishes with and contaminate. Yeah. Think about this. We're talking about they share water with the same water sources that wild animals yeah. drink out of and do other things in. So I, when, when I was at the, the pastor's meeting at the beginning of this year for Church of God in the state of Ohio, and they started talking about all these missionary missions, things that, that they wanted to get involved with, this one hit your pastor like a ton of bricks. And I said, we can do that. $150 to give somebody a water filtration system to give them clean, life-changing water to where they can turn on a tap like we can. It goes through a filtration system, and they have clean water to drink. They have clean water to do their dishes. They have clean water to, to have personal hygiene done and taken care of. But not only that, but giving them this water also introduces them to the, the pastors and the missionaries and, and the follow-up. It's $150. And I know for some people that sounds like a lot, and I'm not asking everybody to give $150. I'm just asking you to do whatever you can do. Your church is going to take care of three of these. My family stepped up and we decided we're going to do one ourselves. Is it going to hurt? Yes, but sacrifice always costs something. But how many people know that we need to take care of those that cannot take care of themselves? Amen. So I've asked you to be, we've, we've, been, we've been talking about this and talking about this since I think January, January, February. I have over-prepared you. And I know that we have some people that aren't here today that want to give. We're not going to send this check out for another week or so. We want to make sure that we get everything that, what are you pointing at? Oh, everything that, you know, everybody, the opportunity that, that's not here. Um, but how many people, I, I believe, I'm going to ask you to do me a favor. I'm going to ask you to get a, a rough count on what we bring in and let me know. I believe that this church can take care, together, can take care of at least, I don't know why, but I got the number 20 stuck in my, in my brain. I believe we can take 20 of these. Anybody believe that? I mean, come on. Come on. Amen. Amen. Four and a half feet. Yeah. Right here, right here, I'm not bragging, right here is, is ours. Here's one. There's four. There's four coming. 
many people know that you can minister to people halfway around the world and not even step foot in her in her homeland? Amen. Right. Yeah. They may never know that they may never know that you did this until we all get to heaven and they they come up and they hug you in heaven and say, You don't understand what you did for me. I don't care if you don't have just give something. And let's bless some people. Amen. Uh, the, the missions number, if you want to write a check and put the missions number in the ledger, the missions number is, I'll, I'll have them leave it up there as the ushers are going. Make sure you put C-O-G-W-M, Church of God World Missions on it, and that's the project number. How many people know that we can probably bust 20 if we really wanted to, amen? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, right now, we pray for all those people, Lord, over in Ecuador that are going to be touched touched by this missions program. Lord, we take water for granted here, but Lord, it is such a necessity for life. Lord, and I, I just pray a holy a Holy Ghost revival break out off of Ecuador through this mission. Because the Holy Spirit in the Bible is represented by rivers and waters, and, and that's what we are providing, Lord. And I pray for the missionaries and the pastors that are overseeing this over in Ecuador. Lord, give them the strength because I know many other churches, Lord, are, are, are participating in this. And I truly believe that through this, every family in Ecuador can have clean drinking water, Lord. Bless these missions offerings now. Bless our missionaries. Bless those that have to give and those don't have to give, Lord. And I pray that you drop Ecuador in our spirit every time we're praying so we can pray for them and pray that they get these water filtration systems, Lord. We love you. We praise you and we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
turn your Bibles once again to the book of Acts. Rachel. I don't trust him. Oh, we're going to go down side. Church, or church, the church of Acts. Yes, that's, it's going to be one of those days. Turn your Bibles to the book of Acts and let's stand for the reading of God's word. Acts, the fourth chapter. Acts, the fourth chapter. Starting in verse one. When you're there, say the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and as many as were of the family of the high priest, were gathered together at Jerusalem. And when they had set them in the midst, they put them on trial. That's what they did, put them on trial. They asked, by what power or by what name have you done this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day are judged for a good deed done to a helpless man, by what means he has been made well, let it be known to you, to you all, and to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him, this man stands here before you whole. This is the stone which was rejected by you builders, which has become the chief cornerstone. Anybody happy you got a chief cornerstone? Come on. Nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Amen. And verse 13 says this, Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, mm -hmm. let me just say that again, Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men, they marveled and they realized that they had been with Jesus. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just ask for, for you to have your way in this service today. Holy Spirit, I need your help preaching this word. I need you so much today to speak through me. I pray that you prepare each and every person's ears to hear what it is that you want them to hear. Lord, prepare our hearts to apply it to our lives, Lord. And, and I just pray against any hindrance that might be trying to hinder this service today. Oh. this house or anybody connected to tree of life. You have no authority to lower any, any, anybody that calls upon the name of Jesus. We put you in your place. You have the wall up in our face. You belong underneath our feet. You are our footstool. We don't have to listen to you. We don't have to entertain you. We are binding you and kicking you out of this place. says amen and amen you may be seated i'm already sweating so you all in trouble i want to talk to you on this subject this morning 
there is something different. There is something different. Now, if you all don't help me, we're going to be here until next Sunday. You know how dangerous it is for me to preach out of the book of Acts, and this is the third week in a row that I've been preaching out of the book of Acts. So you all better get loud or, or buckle up, one of the two. I know, I got, uh, we, we got a meeting afterwards, but maybe we'll meet him in the air before all that. Amen, come on. I got a couple questions. Have you ever walked into a place that you've been many times before and then realized that there is something different there? You ever? Dang. You all right? I noticed. Sorry, squirrel. That was a big squirrel, too. Jeez. See, I about said something bad. I better stop myself. Maybe you walked into a place after a remodel or, or they added a fresh coat of paint. But most of the time when, when, when this happens to us, the thing that is different, even if we don't realize it, is what catches our attention. I did shave. See, different. There's something different. Even if you do not know what it is, it always catches your eye. It, it always seems, and, and then if you can't figure it out, you it, it bugs you until you figure it out. You, you lean over to your, your spouse if you're married and say, there's something different, and, and they look at you like you done lost your mind, or, or whoever you're with, you're like, well, there's something different in here, and they, they look at you like you lost your mind, and, and then you realize, yes, I lost my mind, but there is still something absolutely different in this place. That is what we're truly seeing in Peter and John in our scriptures today. There, there was something different about these two men. And, and, and can I tell you that people should be able to recognize that there is something different. And, and, and what is different about Peter and John should also be different about us today. Y'all going to have to get loud today. Listen, just because Pentecost Sunday was last Sunday doesn't mean Pentecost stopped last Sunday. I'm just going to go ahead and just say what I need to say. I said Pentecost didn't stop last Sunday. That was just the beginning on Pentecost Sunday. Pentecost, did, Pentecost continued throughout the first century church and then the second century church. And then they, they can't shut up the Holy Spirit. So you just might as well act like you, you just might as well act like you've been in, in, introduced to the Holy Spirit today. Because I'll get loud for you if I have to. I know I'm a very soft spoken individual anyway, but I. I did, right? Here's the truth of the matter. Something crazy happened to them while they were in the upper room. Some of y'all haven't had that upper room experience yet. Oh, we need an upper room experience in this. Something crazy happened to them in the upper room. When the Holy Spirit showed up, all 120 people went through a spiritual remodel, a they went through a, a spiritual makeover that happened, and, and they all became different when the Holy Spirit came in. They weren't, the, they weren't who they used to be. They, weren't, they didn't believe what they used to believe. They, they didn't necessarily need what they used to need because when the Holy Spirit showed up and when they were exposed to the Holy Spirit, they instantly changed. At that very moment, they were no longer who they all used to be. This was, this was, come on. This was no restoration. It, see, what happens with the restoration, a restoration takes things back to what they used to be. Where's my car guys at? See, somebody in here has a car that I want to drive, and he hasn't let me drive it yet. Welcome home. No, he don't have hair because that car goes too fast. It done blew it off. I don't know. But when you're restoring, when you're restoring a, a vehicle, doing a restoration on, on a vehicle, 
you are taking it back to what it used to be. Can I tell you that the Holy Spirit didn't come to restore, the Holy Spirit came to change. I said the Holy Spirit didn't come to restore you to who you used to be, he came to change you to who the Lord wants you to be. Oh, I wish somebody was here to have church this morning. Behave yourself, behave yourself. Nope, I ain't going to do it. This was a complete change for the 120 that were in the upper room. Listen, when they were there and they were praying and they were in the court, they had no idea really what they were praying about. All they knew that Jesus promised them a comforter. Jesus promised them power. So they started to pray. And then all of a sudden, like a sound of a mighty rushing wind, came in and filled that hot upper room. And, and fire fell upon their head. And they started speaking in other tongues that... And, when the Spirit gave them utterance, I'm here to tell you we need an upper room experience today. They received a power that they never had or felt before. Jesus even told them that they would receive this power, but he did not explain the power to them. Why? Because they wouldn't have been able to comprehend it. Jesus walked in that power. How can you say that? Well, Jesus had Holy Ghost experiences all the time. Oh, he said Holy Ghost. That's because I'm going old. I'm, I'm, I'm really getting lost in this thing. I mean, even when, even when he showed up to get baptized by John the baptizer, a dove came down. The Holy Spirit came down in a form of a dove, and then the voice, God's voice showed up and said, this is my son. Come on, son. Oh, by the way, I'm just going to go ahead and let you know the Old Testament is filled with the Holy Spirit as well. It's just filled in, in the Holy Spirit in different ways. I ain't got time to get into all that. They received this power that they had never felt before. Acts 1 and 8. This is a verse that if you've been here for any amount of time, you should know by heart. You heard it last week, and, 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 and but it's just as relevant this week as it was last week when it says, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Can I tell you that we got too many people trying to walk in a power that they haven't received yet? We, we got too many people standing behind a pulpit that doesn't even believe in this power anymore. You're being judgmental. No, I'm not. I'm being truthful. And if the truth makes you feel like I'm judging you, I ain't going to apologize about telling the truth. I'm here to tell you that the Holy Spirit is, and the power of the Holy Spirit is just as relevant today as it was in the upper room. And it's just as important, if not more important today, than what it was in the upper room. How can you say that? How can you say people aren't walking in the power? Look, look at what our country looks like today. The Lord's got to let me get out of the book of Acts. I'm telling you right now. Church is embracing sin instead of preaching against sin. I'm not talking about judgment. I'm not talking about not loving those that are lost in sin. You'll never hear me say that. As a matter of fact, you've heard me say from this pulpit, because I know people get mad at the way that I preach, but you hear me say, hey, if you're, if you're lost in your sin, come on in because we'll, we'll, we'll try to pray it out of you as best as we can. Why? Because the Holy Spirit don't restore you back to your sinful nature. The Holy Spirit comes in, wipes out the sinful nature, and completely changes who you are. I'm just going to go ahead and get myself kicked off of Facebook. Is that all right? Here we go. You cannot be saved and live like the devil. You can't say that you're in relationship with Jesus Christ and still, still be doing what you used to do before you came up here and boo-hooed and blew snot. None of this is in my notes. All of this is free.
But when the Spirit, Holy Spirit shows up, when the Comforter kicks the door in, yes. I don't care how many times you come up here and say, shoot a pecan, shoot a pecan, shoot a pecan, shoot a pecan. Oh, pastor wants us all baptized with the Holy Spirit. We better go up there and drink a Pepsi, drink a Pepsi, Coca-Cola. I can't baptize you in the Holy Spirit. Only the Holy Spirit can baptize you. And can I, can I tell you that he won't give you your heavenly prayer language while you're still, while you're still cussing like the devil? Cussing's not a sin. Oh, yes, it is. You just don't know the word of God. It tells us not to let any vile language come out of our mouth. Ooh, you should see the looks that I'm getting, Miss Sally. I better sit down. Preach, preacher. You're doing a good job. Thank you. There has to be a change. There can't be a restoration. I don't know if I'm going to get back on my notes or not, but there can't be a restoration. There has to be a change. Can, you know, I, I, It's weird. I am not a car guy. Ask Bo and anybody else that works on any of my cars. We're Sean Manier. <laughs> Bo, listen, Bo, Bo took vacation from working on my cars, and then Sean tapped in, and now Sean's on vacation too. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Sean Manier's like, dude, you broke a caliper. I'm like, I didn't break it. That's a car my wife and daughter break. You know, but. Oh, you want to bet? I got a picture. Poor Bo's driveway. My daughter pulls out of there like she's evil Knievel. He finally took me a picture. He goes, look what your daughter's doing in my driveway. So that's your wife's fault. She hired her back. I don't know what in the world. As you see the look that my wife's giving me. Where was I? Oh, yeah. I watch these shows not because I'm a car guy, but because I want to feel like I could do that if I really wanted to. Probably not. But I really like when they take these, and a lot of people hate these kind of shows, but when they take these awesome looking cars and they turn them into something else. Like when you see it coming down the road and you're like, oh, look at that. That looks great. Then they pulled up next to you. And you realize they put like a, a jet engine in that car because they're gunning it and they're peeling your paint. We should be peeling the paint of the enemy when he tries to line up against us. I wish I wrote that down. I'm glad that went live. Maybe I'll be able to see it. Holy Spirit gives us <laughs> gives us the engine to beat out the enemy any day. And if the Holy Spirit, if the Holy Spirit has come in, can I just can I just tell you that what was going on with John and Peter? They were they they had the Holy Spirit rocket fuel engine inside them and and, and, and they were preaching and they were teaching and they were healing people. Why? Because of what happened into the upper room. Can I tell you that not only did, did something crazy happen, but can I tell you that it should be noticeable. It, it should be, and it was noticeable to everybody around them. Even those that did not know Peter and John noticed that there was something different about them. Look at what Acts 4.13 says again. Now when they, now when they, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men, they marveled. When's the last time someone marveled at the Holy Spirit working through your life? It says, now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John. Y'all got me sweating up here like crazy. They saw the boldness of Peter and John. The Holy Spirit placed a boldness in them that became noticeable and put on display to those that were around. 
How many people know that when the Holy Spirit gets inside you, that you, it, it, you can't contain it? It has to come out. Just like Jeremiah said, it's a fire shut up in my bones. And, it, it, let's, and can I just translate that? Jeremiah was saying, if I don't open my mouth and start talking about the Lord, I'm going to explode from the inside out. We need to get that explosion and that happiness in us again. It didn't matter what they thought of them. Y'all hear what I said? I said it didn't matter what the other people thought of them. Those that were judging them looked at these two men as uneducated by them and untrained by them. So this boldness did not make sense to them, and it was so noticeable that it caught their attention. They could not hide their boldness even if they wanted to. It caused those judging them to marvel at their boldness. But the boldness did something else as well. Y'all ain't ready. Because their boldness did something else as well. That boldness that they had, that boldness that the Holy Spirit gave them, it exposed everybody around them. It exposed those that were judging them. It exposed the religious folk. It exposed the religious folk to the truth. I'm really trying. The Holy Ghost is messing with me. It exposed them to the truth. What truth is that? It exposed the truth that Peter and John had been in the presence of Jesus. I think I'm just preaching to this side. They all hyped up in here. It exposed the Sadducees. It exposed the Pharisees. It even exposed those with the dirty knees. Right, Chester? Chester loves it when I said that. It exposed the high priests and the low priests and all the priests in the middle and in between. It exposed those that were power hungry and those that were already in power. I wish somebody would hear what I'm saying. It exposed them to one truth, and that truth was these guys have been hanging out with Jesus. Jesus was already ascended into heaven at this time. But they said, these men, these two right here, who are standing before us, who we just threw into prison last night, who we got surrounded by some of the most powerful religious people that, that are in this area, these two men are bold enough to, to, to call us out to call us out of what we did to Jesus Christ. These two men right here, they're standing before us with a boldness that doesn't make any sense, and the only way that it makes any sense is the fact that they have, they have been hanging out with Jesus Christ. I wish somebody hear what I'm saying. Woo. Well, that was my introduction. Y'all ready for some? As Christians, do I have any Christians in the house? Oh, come on. Do I have any Christians in the house? Let me ask it this way. Do I have any Christ followers in the house this morning? Because we've let the world water down the word Christian. I'm looking for some Christ followers in the house this morning. The people that are around you should be able to notice a difference in you. I don't want them to judge me. <sighs> they judge Jesus, they're going to judge you. Listen, they're going to judge you whether you're a Christ follower or not, so you just might as well get judged for the right reasons. I got three golf claps for that point. That's gonna, that's, we can, we can, 
We're killing it today. I'm not just saying it because I want to get you hyped. I'm saying it because the Bible says it. Listen, you all know I ain't smart enough to make this stuff up. Surprised I didn't get a real loud amen from this section right over here. This is Bible. Look what 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17 says. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, Christ followers, he is a, he's the same old thing. He just got restored. He is a new creation. All things have passed away. In other words, what you used to do, what you used to think, how you used to talk, how the, what you used to listen to. My buddy Gordon's in heaven right now helping Jesus preach. I need him because I know exactly what he just said right now. He just said, he's just telling the truth. Old things passed away. Behold, in other words, pay attention. Behold, all things, say all things. All things in my life, all things that I stand for, all things that I do now, all things that, that, that I do outside of my house, outside of the church, the way that I walk, the way that I talk, the way that I dress, the way that I sing, the way that I get excited, what excites me, the way that I talk to my spouse, the way that I talk to my children, the way that I talk to other people children, the way that I, I treat the people in Walmart, the way that I treat the people that cut me off in traffic, all things have become new. Somebody give the Lord a clap offering of praise. That's not the only verse. Look what Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4, 22 through 24 says this, that you put off concerning your former conduct, I just want to make sure I, I, I saw that right. That you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt according to whoo, the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. I wish somebody would hear what the word of God is saying this morning. I didn't write that. I didn't even make that up. There's so many more, so many more scriptures that talk about the change that has to happen. It talks about how he pulled you out of your darkness, but then he sat you in his light. It talks about how you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. The Bible talks about, and Jesus even talks about us being the light of the world. Talking, telling us about how we're supposed to be a, a city on a hill that cannot be hid. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Come on, somebody help me preach this message this morning. There is a change that needs to happen, and it should be noticeable in your life. When, mm, there is something that happens when you get exposed to the Holy Spirit. Not just exposed, but baptized in the Holy Spirit. I know what you're all going to say. Oh, here we go. He's going to talk about talking in tongues. Can I just tell you, talking in tongues to me is very important, but it's the initial evidence of being baptized with the Holy Spirit. It don't stop there. Lord help me. They got quiet on me again. It's the initial evidence of being baptized. Now, listen, listen, you, you, the Holy Spirit comes inside you once you truly give your life to Christ. But when you get baptized with the Holy Spirit, that means you get you allow your spirit man and your physical man at the same time to get exposed to what the Holy Spirit truly 
wants to do. There is a power, the same power that fell on the 120 that you receive, a power that is fueled and backed with a boldness that can only come from him. A boldness that is so noticeable that it shows up before you even open your mouth. Did y'all hear what I said? Before you even open your mouth, that boldness shows up. We say a prayer all the time, Lord, go before us. But do we mean it? Crickets. I just heard crickets back here. Do we mean it? Because if the Lord goes before us, then that boldness of the Holy Spirit shows up. Oh, y'all ain't going to help me. And when you find yourself in a situation that you know that isn't right, that boldness of that Holy Spirit shows up. Or when somebody tries to mm, debate you, the boldness of the Holy Spirit shows up. Can I tell you that it's that boldness that will reveal the truth? It will reveal the truth, the, re the truth of who you are. The truth of who he is. Peter and John were on trial, but was not afraid to speak the truth in boldness. Why? Because they were no longer the same as they were before the Holy Spirit messed them all up. They ran. Y'all remember this? They ran when Jesus got arrested. John didn't. How you know that? Because he was at the crucifixion when Jesus looked at him and said, Mother, Take care of him like your son. John, take care of my mama like she's yours. That's Pastor Rob's theology. That's Pastor Rob translation. We're in hiding, trying to figure out what to do next. Jesus sent him back into Jerusalem. We talked about that last week. But something changed once the Holy Ghost fell, once the Holy Spirit showed up and rocked their world. We need the power and the boldness of the Holy Spirit working in our lives, work through us. Work, we need it working in this church once again and through this church. The boldness removes the fear and allows us to stand when no one else will stand. I said the boldness removes the fear. The Bible says that he didn't give us a spirit of fear. And when that spirit of fear tries to jump on someone that is filled and baptized with the Holy Spirit, it says, uh-uh, I can't get in here. Why? Because there's a boldness that doesn't make any sense. There's a boldness that only comes from the throne room of God. And they stand in boldness no matter what they face. No. Yeah. Holy Spirit, mess us all up again. I said, Holy Spirit, mess us all up again. We need to stand where no one else will stand. We need to speak the truth when no one wants to speak the truth, even when the truth is not what people want to hear. They might not want to hear it, but they need to hear it. It does not matter what they think of you or how they see you. Y'all hear what I said? but I didn't get this many likes today on my, on my face of Insta, Snap, Tweet, Tickety Talk. Geek. What? What geek does that do it? They don't? Remember when all you did was make phone calls on your phone? I, maybe we need to go back to that. Everybody go out and buy flip flip phones from now on. That's what I just said. Can't pay attention. Right? That's it. The Bible tells us that they looked at them as uneducated and untrained. They were not on their level. But that didn't matter. See, because they were educated. They were educated by Jesus. They were trained. They were trained by Jesus. 
They were sent forth with a mission by Jesus. And now they had the boldness of the Holy Spirit guiding them through that mission and working through them as they were doing that mission. Church, listen to me as we stand to our feet all over the house. Jesus wants to use you. Do you hear what I said? Jesus wants to use you. It does not matter what anyone else thinks of you. It doesn't matter how they see you. It don't matter how educated you are. It doesn't matter how trained you are. All that matters is what Jesus thinks of you. He, come on. It matters what Jesus thinks of you. It doesn't even matter what they say about you. All that matters is what Jesus says about you. And when you underneath his blood, when he's washed you with his blood, you know what he says? He says, Father, look at him again. Because all you spirit to saturate us there will be a boldness that will expose the truth of who we have been with my question to you this morning is this can they see Christ in you can they see Christ in you can they say that you've been hanging out with Jesus it should be and can be evident that you have been with him. Those that are surrounding you, watching you, and yes, even judging you, should be able to say there is something different. I knew them yesterday, and they ain't the same today. I, I hung out with them last week, but there's something different with them this week. I, I, I knew them 10 years ago and I knew how crazy they were then, but all of a sudden I, 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 I caught back up with them and there's something different about them. must be willing to surrender everything to Jesus. You cannot receive the power and the boldness of the Holy Spirit without first giving everything to Jesus and hanging on to something that you think that you'll miss. The Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit and the boldness of the Holy Spirit is real. He wants to give you what he delivered in the upper room. He wants to do for you what he did for Peter and John. Church, we need that boldness working in us today. I said we need that boldness working in us today. I need to say this. I feel this in my spirit. The Lord has heard every cry. He has heard every prayer. He has counted the tears that have fallen off your cheeks. And when you have thought that you were alone, he was closer to you than you even realized that he was. And he was the one that stopped you from giving up. He was the one that stopped you from hurting yourself. He was the one that made the interference happen whatever you were planning. And 
even if you don't think anybody loves you, I feel this in my spirit. I don't know who this is for. Even if you don't think anybody else loves you, Jesus wants you to know that he desperately loves you. And he craves to have a relationship with you. But you have to let him in. I don't know who that was for. I feel the Holy Spirit messing with some folk today. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Nobody moving around. Nobody getting up and leaving because the pastor is about to pray. If you haven't been paying attention about what's going on in the world, I'm here to tell you that we're closer to the end than what we are at the beginning. The things that we are seeing happen in this world has been prophesied and talked about in this Bible, in this book for over 2,000 years. What we are seeing come to fruition is what we are supposed to be recognizing as the soon coming of Jesus Christ. But even before that, the gathering away, the calling away of the bride, the church, what we call the rapture. The only way, the only way to heaven is through a true relationship with Jesus Christ may be here today you may be here today and you've never truly given your life to Christ oh you know you've learned how to play church you show up you clap your hands sing your songs you might even shout an amen or two but you've never truly given your life to Christ maybe you're also here today and you've given your life to Christ you've you, you've lived your life but but you've slipped, you, you've messed up, you've, you've kind of put that relationship on a back burner. There's something that you need to fix in that relationship, whatever it is. Don't wait, don't put off tomorrow what needs to be done today. Holy Spirit, get them right now. I feel an urgency today. you're here today and you need to have that relationship or you need to fix that relationship, I'm going to count to three and I'm going to ask you to raise your hands. One, two, three. Is there anybody in the house? Come on, don't hesitate. I feel it. I feel it. As the Spirit was moving over the water, Spirit, come move over us. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. As the Spirit was moving over the waters, Spirit, come move over us. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. Come down. Spirit, when you move, you make my heart bound. When you fill the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will fill me. Come down. Spirit, when you move, you make my heart bound. When you fill the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will fill me. Fire and wind, come and do it again. Open up the gate, lay it heaven on end. Come rest on us, come rest on us, oh fire and wind, come and do it again, open up the gates, let heaven on in, come rest on us, come rest on us, come down, spirit when you move you make my heart bound, when you fill the room, you're here and I know you are moving, I'm here and I know you will fill me. Come down, Spirit. I feel in my spirit someone just holding back. I'm here to tell you right now there's a boldness that is waiting to just get all, all 
all up in you. Ready to flip your world upside down in a good way. These altars are open. I would love to be able to pray with it. Can I pray over it. Can I tell you that one of the coolest things that ever happened to me, and it happened to me when I was about seven, eight years old, and a lot of people will tell you that that's impossible. It's not if you knew my background, but that was the first time that I was baptized with the Holy Spirit. I was at a church camp. My grandfather's church didn't really even really truly preach about this a lot, but every everybody would get all hyped up at church camps back then. Everybody remember family camp, those of you that grew up in it? Man, it was crazy. I went up, I looked at my dad, and I said, I don't know what's going on, but I want that. And my dad said, go pray for it. Looked at my dad, leaned over, looked at my mom. She wasn't paying attention, so I got up and looked. hours and hours and hours for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. He hit me within the first 10 minutes. First time I was ever drunk on the Spirit, Amy, was when I was 8 years old. I loved it. I turned my back on Christ. When You guys have heard part of my testimony. When I moved out to Southern California, I got mixed up in a lot of things. Turned my back on Christ. I gave my life back to Christ after Jess and I got married 27 years ago. I prayed for the Holy Spirit to hit me again. And two weeks after we were married again, it, you want to talk about a double portion? He flat knocked me on. It, I didn't even hit my keister. I promised him that day. Because I was bold in the world that it, that if he saved my life, I will be bold for him wherever he wants me to be bold. But I knew that I was going to need the Holy Spirit. So. There are some of you in here that have been hit by the Holy Spirit and you've kind of, kind of, still kind of been holding in that boldness. I'm here to tell you that that boldness isn't meant to be held in. That boldness has been meant not only to be shared, but to be but to be put on display. It, it is supposed to expose people to the truth. Don't ever be ashamed of being baptized with the Holy Spirit. Don't ever let somebody say, oh, that's not real, that's just emotional. Let me just tell you something, it's more real than, than, than real can get. Because when the Holy Spirit starts praying through you in a heavenly language and you have no idea what in the world you're saying, there is a communication between the Holy Spirit and God the Father that if we just get out of the way, then that the Holy Spirit will start praying for things that you truly need that you don't even need. I know we got to hurry. I know we got a meeting. But I'm not going to rush the Holy Spirit. preach the message that I believe that you wanted me to preach today. Lord, I, I ask, I ask that you, I, you forgive me for not preaching about the power of the Holy Spirit enough. Lord, it seems like it's just something that, that has been swept underneath the rug and, and only comes out for Pentecost Sundays sometimes. But, the, but Lord, I know that the Holy Spirit was more than just a one-time occurrence, but it is something that we truly need. He is something that we truly need working inside us and through us if we are going to do and be who you called us to be and do what you do what you want us to do. I pray that every person that is in here and every person that is watching live or watching the replay, I pray, Holy Spirit, that you jump on them, you saturate them, and you make them different than what they are even right now. Because I don't care what the church down the road says. I don't care what the new philosophy says. I don't care what this watered down religion says. We need you, Holy Spirit, more now than ever before. Give us the boldness that it's going to take to reach this community for you.
So, Lord, I ask that you go before them. But I ask that you continue to minister to them. Speak to them. Holy Spirit, jump all over them to where they got to pull over to have a Holy Ghost breakdown, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. Have your way. In Jesus' name I pray. And everybody in the house says, we are going to have our membership meeting here in about five or ten minutes. I'm getting stuff and I don't got my glasses on. Say what, huh? Y'all want some? You want some Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit news? Come on. So this is the numbers for the water ministry. The numbers came out at two thousand seven hundred and seventy-four dollars and thirty-five cents. At that moment, at that moment, that is eighteen and a half filtrations. But the Holy Spirit jumped on somebody, and they have decided to give and round up to make it 20 filtration systems that's coming. From he is good, amen? There's a mountain to run. 